What's up? How are you guys this weekend? We're doing another day of eating review, this time with homemade Korean meals from Nicole Hong. And before you, you know, rude and disrespectful people, imply anything inappropriate about my orientation towards Asian woman, I will have you know that I am about half a foot too short and not ugly enough to be the preference for the westernized Asian woman. Uh, in addition, I would need to be out of the sun for a few more months, and then I think my complexion would be pale enough. Uh, so maybe we can check one of the boxes, but <laughs> uh, let's let's get into the video before any more nonsense comes out of my mouth. Good morning. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys what I eat in a day. Obviously every day is different. I eat what my body craves or I eat according to what I have in the fridge. Let's just get straight to breakfast because- I mean, we're not off to a great start when your shirt says recycle, you know? Like what kind of mentality? All right. I'm so hungry right now. So for breakfast today, I'm gonna to make French toast and I'm gonna make it with some Hawaiian bread. You know, we did the burger reviews on Best Burger Reviews probably a year or two ago now, and those burger buns, King's Hawaiian, from like a cost effectiveness perspective, are actually pretty good. But uh, <laughs> I don't know why she titled this Homemade Korean Meals, because I have a feeling it's not going to be that traditionally Korean. I've never tried this before, but I heard if you use heavy cream instead of milk, it makes it taste so much better. So we're gonna try this today. I'm honestly just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna do like half a cup, one egg. I'm gonna put in some vanilla extract. And cinnamon. Is it a little ironic when you have like perfectly manicured nails? You know, maybe you spent, I don't know how much uh, manicures are now, but you know, imagine if that money went into the food quality instead. Ooh, this so good. She's using chopsticks. All, all is forgiven if she can use chopsticks like that. I get it, bro. I, I get why these tall, ugly white dudes just, you know, imagine you go on a sushi date and this Asian girl with perfectly manicured pink nails starts, you know, mouth feeding you, uh, chopstick feeding you sushi, you know, like with dexterity. I'm also going to add some powdered sugar. Lots of syrup. This looks so beautiful. Okay, so like, um, well, what what can we compare this to? I I would say it's kind of a normie breakfast, but Americans are almost afraid to use stuff like butter and heavy cream. So the benefit is that you know she has at least animal nutrition in the meal, even though it's low quality, conventional, probably full of chemicals, and the protein content isn't too high. Uh, she is getting a very calorically dense meal, you know, so she's feeding her gut microbiome with starch, carbohydrates, but again, it's, it's all conventional, low quality, agrochemical filled food. You know, she's got Aunt Jemima, I didn't see the brand, but that's like fake maple syrup. You know, she doesn't have real maple syrup. She has low quality ingredients. So, you know, that being said, it costs, uh, it's probably three to four or five times the price to get the quality ingredients, which would actually make this healthy. You know, we, we don't need to go down the list of, it's just going to be a lot of negative chemicals and then whatever was sprayed on the crops of these foods. But the actual food choices themselves of like bread, bananas, cream, butter, those are okay. The gold knife and fork. 
This tastes so good. Bro, if, th if this isn't a fed, I don't know what is. You get some pretty Korean girl with a gold knife and fork to eat standard American conventional crap wearing a recycle shirt. All right, I, I'm, this one's throwing me for a loop. This could be served at a restaurant. Maybe like a, mm. a mediocre diner, I agree. I'm gonna make a chai latte. Oat milk and carton coffee. It's been about two Fantastic. hours since I had breakfast. So now I'm having snacks. I have gummies, rice crackers, and madeleines. Madeleines? Madeleines? So I'm gonna eat this while watching some Selling Sunset. There's no way this is actually what she eats. Bro, what? Why is this video titled Homemade Korean Meals and you're breaking out sour gummies and Madeleines and Takis? These rice crackers are so addicting. Okay, alright. To be fair, that's somewhat Asian, right? Time to make some lunch. For lunch today, I'm gonna make chanchiguksu, which is a- curse. Don't tell me to recycle, bro. I bought, I bought four different color-coded, very expensive, large garbage bins for my, my house, only to find out that <laughs> the jurisdiction I'm in, the area I'm in, they don't actually separate the garbage. They just collect everything in, in one load, and then they separate it at the, at the garbage plant. So I throw like all my recycled garbage. Everything goes in one bin. And in New York, I used to used to separate everything. Used to separate glass, plastic, cardboard, garbage. I was ready. I had I had my different color coded bins. I was ready, but now I just throw everything in one one bin. The color doesn't matter. Korean noodle dish chanchi translates to a feast or like a banquet. So it's usually served at like weddings or any like celebratory occasions. But it's one of my favorite noodle dishes and it's super duper simple to make. It takes like probably less than 10 minutes. So let's make our chanchi guksu. I'm gonna add in a broth maker. I don't know why she would take water from the fridge instead of a faucet. I mean, the water might be a little colder, and but the filtration system in a typical fridge isn't going to make really any significant difference in the water quality. It's an awfully yellow cucumber. Or is that a zucchini squash? What did she say that was? Oh my god, so hungry. So I kind of skipped the, the cooking part because it was just like boring elevator music and her chopping vegetables. Uh, she took some carrot, some cucumber, chopped it up, some rice noodles, and then she took like this bottled soup base, which was like anchovy and fish just in a plastic container. Probably got it some Asian market. And then she sauteed some eggs like an omelet, chopped up the eggs and put them in there. So I would say this is like what I expected clicking on this video because I, I've seen traditional korean cooking and it's usually an excellent balance of whole foods you know you have egg you have rice noodle you have a little bit of vegetables for fiber i would consider this you know with the exception of of the poor food quality an excellent balanced meal so can't complain too much you're getting protein you're getting starch you're getting fiber mm, that's what the body needs so yummy. Now, yeah, the difference between using like the store-bought stuff versus corn and soy-free pasture-raised eggs, organic udon noodles, organic vegetables, changing up the vegetable choices, you know, making your own homemade stock using a less inflammatory one. That that's what makes the difference between super healthy and normie. problem I have with like the uh, the Olipop and any sort of organic can thing that's marketed as healthy, we don't even have to talk about the ingredients and whatever potential preservatives or flavorings or chemicals are in the drink. One, it's in an aluminum can and two, it's made with tap water. 
that's enough for you to not drink it. So, you know, organic, healthy. It's it, Look, water quality in aluminum can, it's out the window. Out the window. 100% out the window. It's time to make some dinner. I think I'm gonna make kimchi dinner because I found this in my fridge. This is like a super fermented kimchi and it's perfect for kimchi jjigae. So let's make some kimchi jjigae. I have some pork ribs here that I'm gonna parboil first just to get rid of the smell. It's so slimy. I'm gonna add a spoon of tenjang and I'm gonna add some peppercorns. For any of you uh, Cro-Magnon Neanderthals, what are, what are my realistic chances of, of getting a Korean chick? And was I right with my initial assumptions that, you know, I got to be like a little more, you know, Northern European looking and about half a foot taller? I think we might be able to work something out. Maybe I need to straighten my hair too. I wasn't paying attention. I think I'm going to make kimchi chicken. Let's make some kimchi chicken. I have some pork ribs here that I'm gonna parboil first just to get rid of the smell. It's so slimy. I'm gonna add a spoon of tenjang and I'm gonna add some peppercorns. Yo, who's in the background? Hold on. I'm gonna add a spoon of tenjang and I'm gonna add some peppercorns. Oh, I think it's her mom. I'm also gonna make some karamari, which is egg rolls. It's definitely Korean. Yeah, add some green onions. I mean, Koreans are known for having like a lot of animal protein in their diet. It's part of the reason they're they're healthy and they look better. They're taller than most of the other Asians. I don't see what that was. Finally, I can eat. Yeah, again, this is what I was thinking of like healthy, balanced Korean meals with a variety of foods. Uh, she made some type of like pork soup, which is as Korean as it gets with like pork ribs, kimchi, gochujang, and tofu. If like... You went into a Korean market as like a, a non-Asian person and got told to make a Korean. I mean, you might actually pick out those few ingredients. Uh, she put another omelet in there. So a lot of animal protein. I didn't see what those those slices of brown stuff are. Maybe it's some type of uh, fermented tofu or something or soybean. But, you know, there is tofu in the pork concoction she made and om omitting the soy is probably for the best even though you you might be able to argue that there are some preparations of soy products that aren't as bad mm. i feel like people might find this weird but this is made from like acorn powder okay. like literal acorns it doesn't really have a taste it's more of like so so acorn powder is, is probably an excellent source of fiber so an excellent source of starch and fiber to balance that meal out in that it, it wasn't anything soy the texture of it. It's just a very soft texture. Kind of like soft tofu in a way. But the sauce is what makes it good. Mm. I mean, this is really, really an excellent meal. And this is why, again, Koreans are, are some of the healthiest people. They have very balanced diets that are high in animal protein. You know, white rice, Starch source, excellent. Acorn powder brick thing, excellent source of fiber. Some eggs or some more animal protein. She's got pork ribs for animal protein. I mean, 
I would say that the potential negative of a meal like this is the gochujang, the chili paste, and like in the kimchi, it's like red powders and a lot of spices that are high in flavonoids and carotene and stuff that's bad for your liver. However, you know, when you've been eating this much animal protein your whole life and you develop properly and your organs are properly sized, that type of stuff is 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 not that big of a deal. It doesn't have as much of an impact on a healthy person as it does an unhealthy person. Mm. If you're wondering where Polo is, he's been sitting at Matt's house because he peed on my mom's bed. He didn't even pee once, he peed four times. So he's kind of been banned from my house for a little while, but I've been able to eat in peace, which is really nice. I like that she has some old school values. Like, I feel like a liberal white girl in New York, if, if their dog peed on their mom's bed, they would just, they'd blame the mom or something. Where the Korean girl, she kicked that dog out. That was that was the right thing to do. Anyway, uh, outside of that curveball of a breakfast, uh, I, I think this, again, like comparing it to a standard in America diet, what the average person is eating, this is super, super healthy. Now, you know, if you want to live to 120, yeah, then you're going to have to go to the farm, get the pasture-raised eggs, do everything organic, homemade. That that's the difference here. That that's the that's the main significant difference here. But uh well, you know, we we kind of saw what I was hoping to show you guys that that Koreans have balanced amounts of almost similar to my diet where I try to have protein, starch and fiber with every meal. And the presence of fermented foods is also very, very important. So uh, maybe we can uh, we can finally get some Frankie Strange Meat merchandise like shirts and send her one. That's not out of the realm of possibilities. But thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any videos or anything you'd like me to watch or recommend a review, uh, just let me know down in the comments below. Outside of that, uh, you can go to frank com where you can support me through all of my unique and interesting businesses where I try to provide you guys with affordable high quality health products. Uh, you know, we have like sauerkraut and pickles and jardinera all lacto fermented now available on Frankie foods.com. We have a variety of starches on the foods website as well. So, you know, similar things to, to what we see here, you could probably actually get all of these foods that she's eating in in higher quality versions and and make meals out of that through the Frankie Strange Meat and Frankie Strange Foods website. But thanks again, guys. If you can drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I guess we should check the comments real quick before we go, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just like a, a bunch of generic supportive comments. I guess when you, you make, you know, food videos like this or day of eatings where you know, you're not pushing any nutrition stuff or have any specific diet. It's kind of hard to critique, but I'll see you guys soon.